But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. And good morning. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony <laughs> Show. Wow. <laughs> That's sliding into home plate. <laughs> Good morning, Anthony. Right. Good morning. <laughs> we have uh, Dana White on the phone. Yeah, he was ah. going to call in later, but something tells me Dana has... Uh, I don't think Dana just got up. I think Dana has probably up for no, the night probably before. been awake. Dana's <laughs> been partying Jesus. since Saturday night, I do believe. He's three hours early for his big phone call with us. Dana, how are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. How you doing, guys? We, we cut our ecstasy of gold and everything just to get you on the air. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I'm still up, so... Thank you. Are you still in Vegas or have you left? No, I'm in Vegas. Yeah. How's the uh, How's the mood there? We, you had an amazing, amazing night uh, oh Saturday God. night, man. It was crazy, man. It was seriously. This whole town was just absolutely insane. It was so crazy. What a car, man. This, we we have a guy who works for us, and you know, I I I, I said it at the press conference. Told him this time this fight aired in 75 countries live. Wow. 75 different countries this fight aired live. And, and we were getting, uh, one of the guys who works for us in production got an email from a guy in Scotland who was doing a golf tournament out there and said, you couldn't go anywhere in Scotland, that this wasn't playing in the bars, and it's all anybody was talking about. It was it was yeah. pretty amazing. It was a big night for us. No, no one also happened. Uh, I think it was the first sporting event that people were following on Twitter. My fucking, yeah, I know. <laughs> my fucking Twitter blew up. People yeah. just talking about the fights, uh, given the results, which uh, in some cases were fine because uh, a bunch of people warned and say, look, I'm going to give results tonight. So if you don't want to see this, you know, don't read my updates. But people were following uh, the, the fights on Twitter. And, I, and I, I don't think that uh, there was a sporting event that has done that. I think you're the first one, my friend. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're real big online. And, and, and you know, for, for years we didn't get covered by the mainstream media. And really up until Saturday night, was the biggest mainstream coverage we've ever had. I was going to say that, uh, yeah. It's kind of a defining uh, moment for UFC, uh, UFC 100. It, uh, it was watched by so many people, and just an amazing card. I mean, uh, it was really a great night of, uh, of fights. It was. It, the, the, the fights were great, and a lot of guys didn't get to see the undercard. The undercard was really good, too, uh, you know. I think there were three submissions uh, where guys literally got choked out, and the uh, the uh, one fight, uh, what's his name, was bleeding. Probably, I, I've seen some bad cuts, but it had to be the worst. Oh match. yeah, it, it wasn't the worst uh, cut I've ever seen. Was it the Coleman fight or no? No, it was, it was Mac Danzig. Yeah, Mac Danzig got that cut, and the it, I, I, <laughs> it was gushing out. The mat was, was never... full of blood. Did, didn't he fight <laughs> that guy? Amazing. He fought some guy Miller, I think, Jim Miller. Yeah. And yep. the guy come in, the guy walks in, and his walk-in music is Credence, and I'm like, this guy is a fucking problem. <laughs> Anybody that walks, in and walks into the ring listening to Credence is a fucking major problem. And, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a bloody match. So people just watching the pay-per-view turn it on, and they see this bloody mat, so you know that the undercard was pretty uh, was rough. It was yeah. The undercard was phenomenal. We watched all the fights. It was just uh, phenomenal all around. The Brock Lesnar thing. Now, oh. I, I got yelled at on uh, Twitter. Because after that whole Brock Lesnar thing, I was really excited and pumped up, and my adrenaline was flowing. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> and then people just beat the hell out of me on my Twitter going, it's not awesome, it's not good for the sport, it's not this, it's not that. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your thoughts on the Brock Lesnar thing there, Dana? Uh, I gave Brock my thoughts as soon as he left the office. <laughs> I, I imagine did. you did. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, listen, it, it, Brock gets fired up and uh, – you know the, the 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 hard part for me is I, I know I know Brock Lesnar. He's a good guy. He's a smart guy. For him to go out and and, and do what he did to me personally that night, you know, is, is what I was upset about. Meaning him going after one of our sponsors, yeah, just being goofy. I mean, and I'll tell you guys, listen, Brock made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he made a lot of money on Saturday night. So to be, you know, is this. I've never, I've never dealt with anything like that before. It's never happened to me, and you know, I've been, I've been in the fight business since I was 19, and I've been in this business for 12 years, and it's never happened to me before. So that was a first. Right. Yeah. You, uh, he, he came out, and it seemed like, it, well, it seemed like when he walked into the press conference, and this, it actually made me like well, Lesnar more. Start with the fight. He didn't even touch gloves, which is, uh, has always been the thing with you guys. Kind of yeah. unsportsman. What, what, what was that? Uh, was there a lot of shit talking leading up to the yeah. fight? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there's that thing too. You got to understand, there was a lot of bad blood between these two. I mean, real bad. I mean, Frank Mir was saying stuff, you know, in in, in the the media and in the countdown show basically saying, you know, 
Let Lesnar is going to get destroyed. This guy knows nothing about fighting. You know, I'm going to rip his leg. I should have ripped his leg off that night. <laughs> um, you know, lot, lots of crazy stuff was going back and forth between these two. And Lesnar was really pissed off about the first fight that he thought he should have won. And, and the referee, um, you know, made a, you know, basically cost him the fight. Right. And didn't he get mad that the ref, he said, let him tap too long, too? He said that he thought he tapped and that he, yeah, he that kept too. tapping. And, and he was right. Listen. Uh, Mazzagotti, as a referee, this fucking guy shouldn't even be watching MMA on TV, let alone refereeing it. Wow. Oh, I think he's the worst ref in the history of any fight business ever. He's horrible. Hey, there's wow. an exclusive. I, uh, stupid me, I thought you picked the refs. <laughs> no, we don't pick the yeah, refs. Right? No, no, no. You don't pick those guys. <laughs> no, the athletic commission does. Yeah, no, those I guys know. are picked by the government. You just don't like that guy at all, huh, Dana? It's not that I don't like him. He's a nice guy. No, you don't like what he does out there. That's He's what I mean. an absolute nice guy. He has no business whatsoever being anywhere near mixed martial arts. Wow. Can I can I tell you, too, we saw this when, when, when you saw Lesnar and Mir walk out. Yeah. Um, Fra Frank Mir looked uncomfortable, and again, Bob Kelly was with me, and, and Bobby has forgotten more about MMA than we all know, and he's like, nah, dude, he looks like that every fight, like, he looked like, to me, I'm like, this guy looks worried, and then, as the fight is progressing, I'm like, please tell me he's working up to doing something, because <laughs> yeah. Lesnar, it, it, it looked like a schoolyard type of beating, where... Brock had his head kind of held and was just, he was just beating him the way the jock would have probably beaten me, Anthony, or Opa. Yes. <laughs> like, I've seen, I've seen, uh, people on the bottom be able to defend. Yes. When someone's on top and they're punching them or trying to punch them in the face, I've seen people on the bottom do a great job of defending against that. Lesnar was punching right through any defense. Yep. That uh, uh, was Amir was trying to come up with and just pummeling him. Uh, it was, I was am amazing. It was amazing to watch. And anybody who knows mixed martial arts knows if you get anywhere near Frank Mir's guard, you're probably getting submitted. Yeah. He's probably the best submission heavyweight in the history of the game. He uh, he got Brock got down there and Frank Mir couldn't do anything. He I mean, was just powerless. Like and Brock is so big and so powerful. The, their first clash before they hit the ground. By the time they hit the ground for the first time, Frank's bridge of his nose was already cut and bleeding. And oh, I mean, <laughs> Lesnar, man, I'll tell you, I, I I gave this guy a shot. He was one and zero. I said, this isn't the place to learn how to fight. His his attitude was, I'm either good at this or I'm not. I, I'm going to find out. I only want to fight in the UFC, and I'll, it's amazing what this guy has done. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're watching uh, some uh, some footage of him uh, flipping off the uh, the audience. That that yeah, was that's awesome. all. That's always a good time. So <laughs> <I always like laughs> that. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? what? Next time he fights, you watch the numbers. If you, if you think you're doing well now, I mean, everybody's going to want to watch the next Brock Lesnar. Fight. Some to love him, some to watch him get his ass kicked. But uh, even though you said that wasn't what you wanted, you said, you said we're not in the business of making heels or any of that stuff. It, it still did work out where people are going to want to watch this guy fight. Oh yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. Listen, I I think people would want to watch him fight just because of, you know, how big and strong and unbelievably talented this guy is. What an amazing athlete he is. Yeah. Who, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his next fight? Uh, do we know? Or any uh, any uh, hints toward who we might fight next? Don't know yet. You know, we've got Shane Carwin and, and Cain Velasquez uh, fighting, and probably the winner of that fight will fight Brock. Jeez. Both he, of them are going to lose their fight. Uh, <laughs> you do, as you're watching this. each other. Somebody's going to have to win. Yeah. You're like, why would anybody volunteer for this? I, I, like, I don't care how much money you make. Because Frank Mir, when you're watching him get beaten, you forget. He's, he, what is he? Uh, he's, I think he's 6'2 or 6'3, 245. Like, he's not a little guy. He's he, a yeah. massive dude. He looked small. Yeah. He looks yeah, small, he, though. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he, he weighed in at 245 pounds in absolutely in amazing shape. He trained hard for this fight. He was in great shape and he was 100% confident. You know, I, I said before the fight, I've never seen Mir's confidence higher than going into this Lesnar fight. See, yeah, so Bobby was right about his face. Bobby's like, dude, he always looks like that. He's relaxed. That's just the way he fights. Sure. And we, we saw, um, the whole fucking night, Dane, uh, uh, Dane was amazing. It was, uh, the card, uh, Henderson Bisping was an amazing fight, and what oh, a yeah. great. He, I've never seen anybody knocked down. And Bisping is a, is a is a good yeah boxer. He's a good fighter. He yep. he got caught with a right. And Rogan is such a great announcer. Rogan called it. Rogan goes, he keeps right moving before, to that left. Right before it happened. Joe Rogan, never get rid of Joe, man. That bastard is good. He said he's going to move. Oh, he's awesome, man. He said he's going to move right into that right hand. And 15 seconds later, he moved he into that it. ugly yep. right hand. And wow. Now, what about yeah. that second hit on him uh, when he yeah. was on the mat? What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, 
Was it unnecessary, or was that just part of uh, MMA? Uh, was no, there a little the thing, revenge you know, going on? The, Listen, they go when there's a lot of times that a guy gets dropped and uh, you know he's not all the way out and, and they can they right. can fight on the ground. You know you're you're allowed to go until you intelligently can't defend yourself. Dan is saying that he was you know he hit him, then he was going back down for that last shot and he he said I I wasn't hitting him again. And then I knew he was out. You know <laughs> he said something stupid. It was the, it was the night of saying stupid things. Yeah, right. Apparently so. <laughs> you know uh, about I, that that last one shut him up just because you know he wanted to get the crowd going and yeah. but you know you, you just you just don't say shit like that. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't happy with Henderson either. Um, you know it's 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 just not. It's not who we are. It's not what the sport is like. And that's not what Dan Henderson's like either. To see him go down like that and then to see him take another hit when he was in La La Land. I mean, there was no way he remembered falling down, never mind that second right. hit uh, right across the face. Wow. But they usually... how, about, how about the Belcher-Akiyama uh, fight? Uh, that was his first fight in yeah. MMA, right? It, it, no, it was his first fight in the UFC. Oh, I'm sorry. I tried that UFC yeah, from uh, Japanese. Pride. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, fight of the night. Yeah, that was yep. a good one. Yeah, but what were they calling him? Because <laughs> he was a model. <laughs> oh yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah. What was, that guy's a model. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. The guy from Japan. He's got. He's a model. What? He's three yeah. things. Model, he's a model slash sing, model singer, singer slash MMA fighter <laughs> actor. I got, actor. I got a problem. I don't want to fucking want to fight him. Raging <laughs> 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 Bull. <laughs> so we got to move on to the press conference. So there's Brock Lesnar sitting there with a Bud Light bottle. I'm like, wow. But it makes how oh, David knows how to do some talking. Dude, it, <laughs> it made you wow. like Lesnar more. It really does make you because he came out and it's like that was to me like when he came out like he had been like, all right, I got my ass chewed out. To me, like that was the first time you see this guy. Like, oh, that's who he is. Like, he's just a regular dude. He got yeah. his ass chewed out by the boss, and now he wishes he didn't say that stupid shit. Like, <laughs> I liked Lesnar a lot more after seeing him at that press conference. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. You know me. If I, if, if if somebody's a dickhead, I'll say it. Yep. Le Lesnar's not not a bad guy. So I just don't want. I just don't get why he's you know acting like. But his thing is, listen, I don't. This is his honest to God thing. He's like, I don't give a fuck if they boo me or cheer me. He says, I could care less. Yeah. You know? He says, I'm out here fighting for me and my family, and if they don't like me, fuck them. You know, that's his attitude. I said, cool, I get that, but, you know, stay away from my sponsors, that, okay? <laughs> that, was a, just a, that was another fight where you can tell it kind of clicked the whole um, MMA up another notch. It put UFC he, up another notch in uh, mm -hmm. in entertainment. In um, uh, credibility, uh, respectability, it's just one of those fights where people are going to go like, "Wow, yeah, I remember that one." You know? <laughs> yeah, it was it was a night to remember. And like you said, you guys were here in town, man. This whole town was buzzing. You know, we had the we had the fan expo that you know we, we had we had between thirty and fifty thousand people that came in just for the fan expo. People that couldn't get tickets. Jeez, everyone was there. Every, every, everyone. And can I tell you, this is I emailed Dana. Uh, I don't know if you got the email, but I got to say one thing: not one fighter that I met was a dick. Not right. one of those guys. Like, cause they were all over the casino. Um, we would see them walking down these giant hallways in, in the back to go to the media room. Every one of them would stop and say hello, take a photo. I watched them interacting with the fans, and like uh, uh, Machida was surrounded by fans in the casino. Yeah, and it, just talking to everybody. Even though I don't think he speaks English, but just you know, smiling and just every one of these guys treats the fans well, man. It's well, really it's so much different than boxing. When you're with Bob, Bob Kelly, Kelly, everyone seems like a dick. <laughs> Bob uh, Kelly, <laughs> can I tell you Bob Kelly? Bob Kelly again, who who I I love and loves MMA. We're back we're backstage. This is a great story. And Listen to this one. Dana. And Reed Harris, who we, we're walking back, and uh, it was right after the fight. So we see Brock walk by right after the fight, and uh, he just looks awesome. I mean, he's he's he really is a force when you're standing two feet away from him. Oof. And so we all just say congratulations, man. And you know he nods and he keeps going, and then Frank walks through. And Frank looked pretty beat up. Like I was surprised how beat up he looked. Like standing he was. He, that close to him. Oof. And it, it was a really sad feeling because you're watching a, a great fighter who was just who's lost a fight, and you want to say something to him, but you don't know what you what do you, what do you say? And we're all just kind of quiet. And Bob goes, 
Good job, Frank. And it's like, <laughs> he wasn't trying to be a dick. He really loves Frank Mir. But it, as a comedian, that's just what you say to somebody. Like, hey, man, good job. Like, you know, it was a bad crowd. Like, that's just what we say. Whoa. And it was just a reaction. He goes, good job, Frank. And, you know, thank God Frank didn't just take out his aggression. He should have punched his face. <laughs> but it's like you don't know what to say. You want to make the guy feel better somehow. Yeah, you want to yeah. you you give the guy a hug when you see him beat up like that. You want to go, look, man, don't worry about it. You don't. What do you say to somebody after a fight like that? that to, no, you, what do you it's, say? it's the same thing. I went back and talked to Stefan Bonner. And I said, how are you feeling? You know, and Bonner was like, you know, feeling like I want to hang myself. And oh, I'm mm. like, cheer up, kid. You win some, you lose some. It's all good. You know what I mean? It's like the, the one thing about being a fighter is that, you know, it's not like the, the Yankees play the Red Sox and you lose as a fucking team. And you're like, ah, fuck it. We got, we got 152 more games this season. We'll win the next one. You know what I mean? It, it's When you're a fighter, you go out there by yourself, you know, and, and you're as good as your last fight. It's, it's, a, it's a tough business, you know. So, yeah, it, it is cool when you see the guys say, hey, you know. Good fight. Now, you know how I know that? Uh, because uh, during when I play uh, UFC Undisputed uh, and I get an email from Dana after losing a fight, it's very nice. It's like, you know, hey, you, you lose some. It there, was a kid. tough fight. Here's your next one. I'm like, okay, Dana. I, I understand now. I feel better about myself. Anthony's character is the only one in the UFC game with a dress. <laughs> <laughs> hey, chop meat does good. <laughs> What else? Do you, what do you get else? Uh, you got brewing there, Dana. Anything you could talk about? Um, you know what? We're excited to come back to the East Coast. August, we're coming back to the East Coast. We're going to Philly, dude. Philly got, for the uh, first time, by the way. Yeah, Philly, that, listen to this. Philly for the first time. The thing's almost sold out. It's already the the, the biggest event ever in the history of, of that state. What do you wow. mean? It's the highest grossing uh, event they've ever had. Wow. And you got, and, and fighting, where, where exactly in Philly? This is August 8th, I think, am I correct? Yeah, at the Wachovia Center in, in, in Philly. Jesus. And they are fighting BJ Penn, I think, is the main event? Yeah, BJ Penn taking on Kenny Florian. Um, and, and uh, uh, well, yeah, what's his name? Holy, holy shit. Who, Forrest Griffin and Griffin, Anderson yeah. Silva. Anderson Silva's moving up to 205 to fight Forrest Griffin. I want to see that one, yeah, man. Far, Me far, too. Yeah. <laughs> Forrest yeah. just looks menacing everywhere. Like, I saw him I just sitting there signing Couple. for people, and he's very, he's, we've had him in. He's he's a nice guy. He's a funny dude. He rules. He just looks menacing. You can't, <laughs> even when he smiles, you're like, he, he, uh, could, yeah. he could literally just bite my face. <laughs> he's definitely a problem. Hey, Dana. You guys got to come out for that fight. Dana, I'm, I'm, we are, absolutely, man. I'm, we're all going. Yep. Excellent. It's going to be my first uh, live UFC event. I can't Excellent, wait. Man. In Philly, yeah, it, it, especially. It, it, you, you can ask those guys, man. It's, it's just so much different live, man. The energy and the buzz, it's, just, it's, 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 a, it's an incredible night. The, the feeling of when the, when the music starts, and we've all watched it on TV, but when you see these guys coming out, I don't care what weight class they're in, when you see these guys coming out to their music and you just watch this entourage it's walking like watching out. watching Gladiators. It is like watching yeah. two guys walk into a Roman college. It's, it's yeah. an amazing energy you can't get anything like a live fight man i'm, I'm kind of addicted to it after going to two events like i want to see these things live I, if i have to watch them on pay-per-view and watch them on paper i really would but i want to go live and watch every these time guys now, fucking right? fight because the undercards are amazing yeah. I'm, I'm psyched i just got my nose uh, nosebleed seats for the philly show i'm i'm, I'm pumped <laughs> i got my binoculars i'm ready to go dana do you think you see shit dana dude the seats <laughs> can i tell you the seats that they, they these guys do nothing but give out amazing seats i saw your picture on twitter man jimmy had awesome seats they, dude th they gave us we were one row up from the floor, but first row. So we we're eye level with the ring. And, and Reed is just the greatest. He kept bringing fighters over to say hello. He brought over he brought over uh, uh, Machida. He brought over Rampage. He brought over Rashad Evans. He brought over Hoist Gracie. It was it was almost we were treated so well. It was almost embarrassing. <laughs> we have such low self esteem that anybody treating us well, we don't know how to handle. Some guy sitting next to me, after Hoist Gracie came over, just said hello. Some guy next to me finally went, who are you guys? <laughs> to me and Bob Kelly, he's like, who are these fucking nobodies that these champions keep coming up? So, dude, uh, the whole night uh, was amazing, man, and thanks for taking care of us. Yeah, Jimmy's no, just pleasure, been... Man. Aren't, aren't those the best seats? Well, when we buy, when we, uh, when me and Lorenzo buy tickets for boxing, those are the seats we buy. They're the best. 50-yard line, front row up, t you know, the first row up, yep. you can see everything. You're right there on the level because you're looking through when you when you're watching in the octagon you're looking through a fence and I was on the floor for the first one which is amazing but you're looking up a little bit this is up like a couple of feet and then you're and there's no one in front of you makes all the difference dude right? it's it's oh, fucking amazing. eye level with yeah. the ring it's it, amazing Dana I got to read this because I think this has happened a lot uh, someone just wrote in I was never a big M MMA fan but thanks to the UFC game in ONA I ordered UFC 100 I'm now hooked. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And now you're so going to awesome. have it in Mexico. What well, you said, you opened it to like what a uh, hundred million on free TV in Mexico because there's a million people in, and, and to uh, to about two hundred forty million in, in uh, China. So you know wow. that, that eventually yeah. these people, after seeing it for free a couple of times, is that what you did? You put it on free TV and, like, you know, yeah, let's be honest. on free TV. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> my philosophy. Think about it, guys. When we were growing up and you became boxing fans back in the day, it's because you used to see all the big fights on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Mm -hmm. you know, then they had USA's Tuesday Night Fights on, and that's, that, that's really uh, where all the big pay-per-view stars in the 90s came from. And uh, I'm, I'm a big believer. Plus, you know, our fans buy 12 pay-per-views a year. You know, I can take it on the chin and give them some big fights, you know, uh, you know five, six, seven times a year. Right. Mm, and yeah. you mentioned the one thing I like about or, or the, about you, the way you run the organization is there's like a transparency. It's like you don't hide things from the fans. And I, right. I think that's kind of why it, it rolls downhill and the, and the fighters kind of feel like they're on the same level as the fans in a way, too. Like you talk about things. You don't just brush it under the carpet. Like when the Lesnar thing happened or when you weren't happy about what Dan Henderson said at the press conference you, or before the press conference, you're like, well, what do he say? And you talk about it. You don't sweep it all away. And you're very mm -hmm. open about it. And like Fedor, you get sick of hearing about Fedor and like he's with a, a competing group right now. But you mention him at the press conference and you're like, look, that's yep. the fight people want to see is Fedor Le Lesnar. I'm going to try to get it done. He's got one more fight under that contract. And yep. uh, you admit that you're going to go after him. Whether you get him or not, it might be beyond your control. Right, exactly. It takes two people to make a deal. But you know what? And, and the way that I, I run the business, it's like when you try to bullshit people, people know you're bullshitting. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Some people don't <laughs> like the way that I talk, and they're like, how are you ever going to go mainstream with the way that you talk and the things that you say? Listen, I, I, I'm a fight fan just like any other fight fan, and, and I'll come out and tell you, we had a shitty show tonight. This show sucked, and, and I'm going to try to make it up to you and give you the next one on free TV or – do it again or do something else. You know, you get out there and you have your lawyers write shit for you and you try to, you know, you go out there and try to lie and cover things up. People see right through it. Yep, what, yep. To me, what's the point? Fuck it. Yeah, you said, absolutely, man. I was watching you after at the press conference. You were doing, Dana was doing some interviews that were just with some smaller uh, outlets guys holding. And you just sit there kind of holding court and they were asking you questions. And I caught part of what you said to one uh, group. You said, no, 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 they wouldn't even give us a meeting. Who wouldn't give you guys a meeting back in the day that probably you, you went and pitched UFC to and then said no? EA Sports. Who's that? EA Sports. EA Sports. Oh, no yeah. kidding. The and, video game company. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they said that they, did, they didn't want to sit down with you guys? Right. Oops. They said we're not a real sport. <laughs> that was a smart move. Oh. <laughs> a real flash in the pan, UFC. That's, well, way to have insight into the way that... But it's amazing. Like Boxing, look, respect to boxers. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, if UFC guys had to just stand up and box, it's a, it's a very tough way to make a living. But it, UFC, it makes it hard to watch boxing anymore. It's... I was saying the same thing. You watch UFC, and all right, the guys are standing there, and they're throwing some punches, and it's like, hey, where'd that foot come from? Yeah. Hey, he just put the, the, his foot on the side of that guy's head. And it, it adds an element that uh, boxing just, in my opinion, can't compete with. Thank uh, you. Dana? <laughs> He's gone. What happened? Well, I imagine he didn't hang up on us. I think so. I think he said, didn't like your... "Screw you guys." Would it be funny? Didn't if like your comment. Would it be funny Damn. if whenever Dana called, he gave himself uh, a, say, an eleven-minute uh, maximum, regardless of what's happening? And, and as we're, we crossed over, he just hangs and up the just phone. Hung up. He's yeah. got OCD with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> hanging up goes against everything you just said for the last five yeah. minutes. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you if a question uh, sucks. Shit. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you that. Click. <laughs> it's <is>. funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the hell happened? You don't have to put him on hold. Um, just put him on. Type in his name. Yeah, know just put DW. We know Thank who he is. You. Dana. Were you there bored by go. Anthony's comment? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, I got dropped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what did you hear us up to? <laughs> we, we, uh, Right when I said EA Sports. Oh, okay. We were talking about uh, there's nothing worse than when you think you're hitting a home run because someone is really paying attention and you realize their call just got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, and we've been saying it a lot, I mean, you, you, UFC is making boxing look ridiculous. Yep. I'll say it. I mean, uh, boxing still, it's, no, it's ridiculous in my eyes because yeah. they're just boxing. So much uh, can yeah, happen in that, in that octagon. So much can happen that it's not just two guys. Uh, duking it out with their fists, like I said uh, before, you were rudely dropped. Uh, you, you know, you're watching, and then uh, there goes a foot right upside somebody's head, and uh, you're like, "Holy shit, where did that come from?" Uh, well, you know, you, you know what's crazy. You know, I came from boxing. 
I was such a diehard boxing guy, and, and a lot of a lot of things have hurt boxing as far as the business goes. Mm-hmm. And, and and there's still some fights that that are interesting that I, w- I want to see Pacquiao fight again. I'd like to see Pacquiao fight Mayweather, you know, and things like that. Mm. But it's so true. Now when you watch boxing, you know, you'd be watching, watching, you're like, come on, kick him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. It's just, Take it's him down. It changes the way you watch fights. Yeah, see, when the guy's up against the ropes, you're like, fucking choke him. What are you doing? Just stepping back. <laughs> Standing eight. What is this shit? <laughs> but you, it, it removes, it, there's, there's so many elements of attack in, in UFC, which is, it's like, you forget that they're punching for a couple of minutes and you forget that, oh, yeah, now he's going to grab him and throw him on the ground and then try to break his arm back. It's, it's just it, it, yeah. every, Amazing. every they, angle is covered by UFC. Dana, you think, it would, you think it would ever become an Olympic sport? I do. You know, I say this all the time. When you think about it, really, it should be an Olympic sport. Uh, if you think boxing is an Olympic sport, um, wrestling is an Olympic sport, uh, they can do taekwondo where they can kick and strike and do all the things. Um, judo is an Olympic sport where they use submissions. I think everything that we do is an Olympic sport already, but, uh, you know, who knows? It, it, the way that this thing's growing, it could happen, but I, I hope I'm alive to see it, when you know, if it does happen. And George St. Pierre, by the way, was, uh, was, 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 was like a really, uh, they were kind of on the mat through the whole fight. But, Unbelievable. Uh, what a specimen, that guy. He's a yeah, physical he really specimen. A man. He fought the perfect fight that night. You know, th- here's the other thing about him. He, he, uh, he tore his groin uh, during the third round of that oh. fight. After the fight, he couldn't even walk, you know. But he went two more rounds, and, and you, missed, you couldn't even tell that it happened. It's- Alves could not stay on his feet. It was just amazing how many times he was thrown on his ass that fight. <laughs> it really was. And what, what, what shocked me, too, is George St. Pierre dropped him, too. He was? Yeah. He hit him with a straight right yep. hand. And oh, yeah, him. yeah. That. Yep. He was, uh, it, it, he was throwing him down at will, and whenever he wanted to put him on the ground, he was putting him on the ground. Uh, yep. And watching the fight, it's amazing how you watch these guys right before the fight. Uh, when St. Pierre is getting ready to come out, um, uh, Alves is walking. Uh, are we saying his name right? Yeah. Okay. He's walking. He's pacing uh, uh, back and forth in the ring. And I'm like, why would anybody step into the ring with this guy? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. and St. Pierre just fucking pretty much manhandled a he really did. good he fighter. Did. He manhandled him, definitely. He did. No <laughs> doubt about it. And I said it, too, before this fight, man. I said, this is going to be the tef- the toughest fight of his career. And he went out there and absolutely... You know, handed it to him. Any time, really any time he went inside on that guy and tried to do anything, uh, St. Pierre would just throw him on his ass. It was nothing. There was nothing he could do about it. <laughs> GSP is a study, really. Is. It, it was. Yeah. It's embarrassing to be like in the same species class as him. <laughs> it's like, is genetically that who I compete with to fucking to to spread my seed? It's really. Uh, but what sexy <laughs> shorts, right, Jim? Dude, I'm. Oh, ple- I, you I, see his odd from I, from where you were sitting. I could see it. I was out getting popcorn and I saw it. I was. I'm like, I hope. I'm like, I hope that's a cup because that really makes me feel like a girly man. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, he wears the tight shorts and a cup that's really big. Yeah, no, he wears the cup that I would wear if I could get away with it. Just a, like, are you sure you want a triple XL? Yeah, just relax. Yes, yes. Give, me, give it to me. It'll look good on TV. Right. Shorts, it's amazing. That guy's smart. But yeah, it was, it was the whole the whole night was was really great, and uh, every fight was great. Who else is fighting August eighth? Because I, I know I want to go to that. You have BJ Penn, and who else is on that card? Yeah, BJ Penn and, and Forrest and. Uh, oh. Yeah, and Anderson Silva. Yeah, Silva. That's a nice uh, card, man. All right, so August 8th at the Wachovia Center in Philadelphia. Fucking Philly gets UFC. They are pumped down there, my friend. Is there any kind of a fan thing going on, or is that tough to pull off because of the location? Yeah, no, we're not doing that. This was our first one, so, you know, we're going to regroup this week and figure out when we'll do the next one. Well, you should do another one because it was – I just walked through a couple of times – Every fighter that you'd want to meet was there signing, and uh, they were all, you know, they were all organized in the lines. It was actually better than the Porn Expo, which I thought was was is like all this madness kind of mm-hmm. focused and done very well. This was even better. It was organized, and everybody got to meet whoever they wanted to meet. So cool. it, it just it was great, man. The whole whole night was fantastic. Thanks, I appreciate it, and thanks for your support. You guys are the best. Yeah. Well, thanks for everything, man. We'll definitely uh, see you soon. And uh, you put on the, the the night was amazing. I was happy for you after Lesnar won like that. I think that, look, is no disrespect to Mir, but I think Lesnar winning overall is better for the UFC because it's a recognizable name. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's like this guy's not a fluke. He didn't just walk no. in and, and, hey, he won a couple of fights. This guy, it's now that he's monster. learned a little more, he just, beat the just, submission expert. Monster. Just watch your yeah. numbers the next time Lesnar fights. I mean, I'm it's going to be Herring, unbelievable. Randy Couture and Frank Mir, he's taken all three out. 
You know, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just, exactly. He didn't just beat me, or he beat uh, he beat Kotor, and he's he's like mm-hmm. the guy's the real deal, man. And mm-hmm. it's like a lot of people don't want to admit that they want to go. Oh, he's just this big wrestler who came in and throws his weight. No, he's the fucking. He, he grabbed Frank Mir by the head, <laughs> and he kept under punching oh, him. That one was yeah. And I wanted to yell, "Get off him! Get <laughs> off him!" <laughs> so a, a great night, dude. Great night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you, guys, man. Hey, Dana. Dana thank thank you. you. Go get some sleep. All right. See you soon, buddy. All right, Dana White from the UFC, obviously.